Um, that future is now. Straighten your leg and lift your heart. It gives you feedback on form and progress, all delivered in real time in your ear. It is a creative, focused, environmental, and motion sensor. A software converts the sound into data and sends it to the shirt, where 16 vibration motors pulsate with the intensity of the music. Hey geeks, it's your host of Geek is Chic. I'm here with the brainchild of the Wearable Summer here at CES 2019. How you doing, Julie? I'm great, how you doing? Is this your husband that's here with you? Indeed it is, yeah. And so we have an actual power couple that they're the ones that are the visionaries and all the energy and excitement that's behind the Wearable Summit, which we saw so many amazing trends. We definitely need to hear your opinion on the top trends uh, going into 2020. So for 2020, we're seeing a lot of neurostimulation being used as a substitute for anything from uh, depression, bipolarism, pain, just kind of replacing opiates and, and, and using our own body to heal ourselves. So we're actually looking inwards for the technology instead of applying outward products. You have a company that is a part of the, the CES. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about your company and what the, what the vision is? Sure. Our company is part of a larger company called Living in Digital Times, and we produce the Wearable Tech Summit, we produce a Fitness Tech Summit, we produce Young Innovators, Digital Health, and all of the lifestyle technology at CES. So was it somewhat of an uphill battle to uh, introduce this type of wearable technology? It was kind of interesting. Nine, nine years ago, there really wasn't that much wearable tech. So it's, you know, we literally had had models walking down a runway holding a laptop computer, you know. <laughs> it's like being really literal about it. So are you, do you see yourself integrating it all with Magic, which is a big expo out here for fashion or Fashion Week up in New York? I think the people that are doing fashion are just now catching up with the fact that they can enhance their designs with technology. So I think we'll see more of it in the future. So what should consumers out there know about this field? For me, I, I just tell consumers not to be afraid to experiment and not to worry about battery life, not to worry about how it looks at this point, but just figure out how wearable technology can fit into your life personally. You know, because that's what it has to be. It has to serve a purpose in your life. There's no point in just putting it on just because it's cool, right? Part of the thing is, is wearables is the whole feel the market, wearable market, it's just expanding. I mean, I mean, we're basically talking about fashion right now, but like yesterday, we went into wearables in the workplace. We talked about uh, health and wellness wearables. We talked about fitness wearables. So, I mean, the market's getting bigger. Um, and I think fashion, the obstacle of fashion right now is, is the cost, the technology, battery life, things like that, uh, usability, washing things, um, sustainability. sustainability. Um, but, you know, the, the field of wearables itself is expanding into all different parts of your lifestyle. So touch points are, are wearable devices and they do look similar to a smartwatch, but they do something completely different than what smartwatches do. I think today we've, um, when we think about wearables, we think about trackers. How many steps did I walk? How much water did I drink? How many calories did I burn? But what we've done with Touchpoint, and, and I love how Daniel talked about democratizing technology, we set out with a very similar mission. We're saying we've found a way to deliver haptic micro vibrations to the brain in such a way that we're able to alter the unproductive brainwave activity in seconds. Gone are the days of simply tracking things or giving you information. Today, consumers are saying, I want my wearable to do something for me. I want it to be functional. And that's really where we're taking that touchpoint technology. How can companies make wearables that people actually want to wear all the time? Well, I think what's important to recognize is that, you know, like I talk about it in all of my work, that the anomaly is the norm. So you're not going to create something that's perfect for everyone. Um, and, you know, each individual is going to be really looking for something that's solving an, a, a problem that is specific to them. And because of that, you have different types of profiles of you know, of certain needs, but you also have different types of profiles of people that have experience with prior sort of experimenting with solutions. And that's gonna sort of formulate what is gonna work for them. So there's a lot of different things that come into it, but it's also sort of some things will be driven more towards 
um, sort of, you know, women that have a history with certain things, and where, whereas there may be other things that are designed that really do not appeal to women or do not appeal to people that have had a, person, a particular type of experience. And the other piece that came out of my research was really that a lot of people have traumatic experiences with technology at an early stage that really impact what choices they make in technology going forward and, and how much technology they, they choose to integrate into their lives. So it's not just form factor anymore, it's a lot more about how does it fit seamlessly into their lives in a way that uh, they're gonna get the intended outcome of it.